Hi everyone, my name is Michael Rubenfeld. Uh, this is where I talk about my experience being a Jew from Canada with Polish roots who moved to Poland and now I live here. And today I want to talk about a really important woman named Sarah Schneer. And the reason I'd like to talk about Sarah Schneer is, well, frankly, uh, I had intended to speak about her at some point because uh, what she uh, did was remarkable. But uh, unfortunately, an event happened the other day that reminded me the importance of speaking about who she is now and hopefully using these events as a way to bring something positive into the world. Sarah Schneer's uh, grave was destroyed the other day. We don't know who did it. Um, uh, the grave is in the former Kale Plaszow concentration camp. Why? Well, because before it was a concentration camp, it was a cemetery, a Jewish cemetery. Uh, in fact, there were two Jewish cemeteries there, and that is where Sarah Schneer was buried. Of course, hers and many others were originally destroyed by the Germans when they built the concentration camp there. And in 2005, her grave was restored as a commemoration to her and her remarkable life. Okay, but who was she? Sarah Schneer was born on July 15th, 1883 in Krakow, Poland. She was born to uh, an Orthodox Jewish family and she had many brothers and sisters. She was born at a time in Poland where Jewishness was becoming more secular which means that a lot more people were moving out of the orthodoxy and into the secularized world, including some of her siblings and a lot of her friends. It was a particular issue amongst women because women at the time didn't really have the access to Jewish education in Poland, whereas men did. Orthodox Jewish men were encouraged to go to yeshiva, which was a place of study for Jewish men. They would learn the Torah, they would learn spiritual study, but none of these things were accessible to women. But Sarah Schneer was very intelligent. She had a strong desire to learn. And so she did a lot of self-study as much as she could, but she always uh, lamented the fact that she didn't have the same access to Jewish study that her brothers did. When the First World War broke out, her family left Poland to Vienna for refuge, to stay safe. And while she was in Vienna, she would attend the sermons of a rabbi by the name of Rabbi Moshe Flesch. One of the things that uh, Rabbi Flesch used to speak about was the importance of Jewish women in Jewish history. And those sermons became very important for Sarah, and they inspired her to do what she did next. After the First World War, she and her family returned to Krakow, and she had the idea to open a school for girls. And at the time, this was incredibly unorthodox. She approached one of her brothers and asked him for his help. And his response was, whoa, this is uh, pretty controversial, teaching women the Torah, hmm, I don't know. But he did agree to bring Sarah to meet with the Belzer Rebbe to see what he would say. According to Sarah Schneer herself, in the meeting, she told the Rebbe that she wanted to lead Jewish girls in the path of Judaism. And lo and behold, the Belzer Rebbe gave Sarah his blessing now, of course, she didn't say that she wanted to open a school for girls. And later on, the rabbi discovered that the blessing he gave her was apparently what she used to open the school for girls. He wasn't so happy about it. And so he forbid uh, his congregants from sending his girls to the school. But that didn't stop Sarah. And she did open her school. It all began in her sewing uh, workshop, she was a seamstress and she opened a kindergarten for 25 Jewish girls and that's where it all began. What Sarah could see was that because of the lack of education for Jewish women, there was often very little incentive for them to stay in the orthodoxy and so often they would leave. But what Sarah believed and what she proved right 
was that through education, through teaching the women Torah, through teaching the women song and Jewish learning, Jewish spiritual learning, they developed stronger spiritual connections to Judaism. And not only were women staying in the Orthodoxy, women from around uh, Europe began attending Sarah's schools and the involvement of women in the Jewish Orthodoxy began to grow. The schools were called Beis Yaakov, and they were actually very warmly welcomed in Krakow. And there was an organization called Agudat Yisrael began supporting Sarah early on. And eventually, working together with Sarah, they helped to reproduce the model for other parts of Poland and eventually around Europe. And on the eve of World War II, there were over 250 Beis Yaakov schools around Eastern Europe. That's a remarkable, remarkable number. And still today, Beis Yaakov schools continue to exist, but not only exist, but thrive. In New York City, for example, there are Beis Yaakov schools that create religious spaces for Orthodox Jewish women to study and even go to university uh, in a religious environment. So her influence on women in Jewish Orthodoxy is unparalleled. And although I myself am not an Orthodox Jew, I have always held the utmost respect for what Sarah Schneer has done for the Jewish world. There's a kind of funny thing for Jewish people in and around Jewish Orthodoxy, or maybe it's just for me, I'm not sure, but although I'm not an Orthodox Jew and I myself have no interest in becoming an Orthodox Jew, I'm happy that there is a strong Orthodox Jewish world. In a funny way, knowing that there are Jews who are Orthodox in the world, who are fighting for Jewish spiritual life has an interesting trickle-down effect for Jews around the world. I believe if Orthodox Jew Jewry wasn't strong, it would actually cause Jewish culture to be uh, less strong. And so, although sometimes there's, there's friction between Orthodox Jews and non-Orthodox Jews, there is also a lot of support and respect between secularized Jews and Orthodox Jews. This is, you know, a comment that other people might disagree with, but it's how I feel, and I think a lot of other Jews feel the same way. Sarah Schneer wrote uh, her memoirs, and there is a really beautiful quote that I want to share, and I'm going to just read it because I can't memorize it. But basically, what she said was, And as we pass through the days of the high holidays, fathers and sons travel, and thus they are drawn to Gare, to Bells, to Bobov, to all those places that had been made citadels of conceited religious life, dominated by the figures of the Rebbe's personality. And we stay at home. The wives, daughters, and the little ones we have an empty festival. It is bare of Jewish intellectual content. The women have never learned anything about the spiritual meaning that is concentrated within a Jewish festival. The mother goes to synagogue, but the services echo faintly into the fenced and boarded off women's galleries. There is much crying by elderly women. The young girls look at them as though they belong to a different century. Youth and the desire to live a full life shoot up violently in the strong-willed young personalities. Outside the synagogues, the young girls stay chattering. They walk away from the synagogue, where their mothers pour out their vague and heavy feelings. They leave behind them the wailing of the older generation and follow the urge for freedom and self-expression. Further and further from the synagogue they go, further away to the dancing, tempting light of a fleeting joy. So for me, I interpret that as women moving towards secularized world, because why wouldn't they, given that description? 
And what Sarah Schneer did was combat that by offering Jewish women a place where they can learn, they can connect to Jewish spiritual life. And for that reason, she is one of the most important uh, figures in contemporary Jewish history. Her first school is in Krakow, actually right around the corner from my house, and it's commemorated by a plaque. Here you can see it. And in 2005, when her gravestone was put up, almost a thousand of former students actually came to Poland to celebrate her. I feel very sad and sorry uh, for them to uh, hear the news of the grave being destroyed the other day. Thankfully, the city of Krakow, who knows and acknowledges the importance of Sarah Schneer and the brutality of this event, have uh, vowed to immediately restore it, and they will. But I'm sorry to say that I think that the vandalization of her grave uh, is probably connected to the rise of anti-Semitism in general right now in the world. And sadly, um, Poland is a, a safe place, but it's not escaping these kinds of acts. But I hope that you can take this knowledge of, of Sarah Schneer, who she is and her legacy, and share it. Share this video, share this information with people because she was an important figure. And the next time you go to Płaszów, if you've never been now, you'll know a little bit more about her. And you can tell the person that you're uh, walking with. You have some backstory to who she was and why she did what she did. Thanks very much. I love you all.